Hi, this is Munson with Munson Music, and we're gonna talk about how you can play a song called Bartender by Lady Annabellum. And this song is really cool with a lot of riffs, and actually I'm sure this is gonna end up being kind of a long video to talk about all the things I normally talk about with, with, a, with an easier song. Um, but we're gonna start off with kind of that opening riff, actually. It kind of starts on the second fret on the A string. And we do that three times, and we can play open E, second fret on the low E, and then open A. Which is kind of a cool little riff, kind of that two, 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 two on the A three times, and we do open A twice. So that whole riff, you got kind of a B, 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 E, F sharp, A, and then a B, 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 A, A, B, 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 E, F sharp, A, B, 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 A, A, two, 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 O, two, O, two, 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 O, O, if you kind of dig on that. And you could make that slightly thicker by using some things called power chords. So rather than starting on just the B note, you can use a B5 power chord, where you do first finger on the A second fret, third finger on the D string fourth fret. And if you strum just the A and the D strings together, that sounds a B5 power chord, which sounds really, really powerful. So you want to kind of back up that B note with that idea. And then for the E note, you could play an E5 power chord by doing first finger on the A second fret with the open E, it's kind of an E5 power chord. And then we could go to an F sharp five power chord, first finger on the do E, second, third finger on the A, fourth. And then we could go to an A5 power chord, where you got open A and second fret on the D. So you can kind of back that whole worth up with power chords if you wanted to, kind of a B, E, B, E, F sharp, A, B, B, chord instead of a B5 by doing first finger across the entire second fret, second finger on the B third fret, third finger on the D fourth, pinky on the G fourth, kind of working out of your B minor chord, or, or if you wanted to jazz it up, you could lift off the pinky and make it a B minor seven. Or if you're just starting out trying to avoid bar chords, you just want to get kind of a bigger sound like that. Another way to play B, B minor seven, we'll be doing first finger on the A second, second finger on the G second, third finger on the high second. Kind of work on that for your B minor. So we kind of gravitate towards one of those. But there's this cool riff actually around the B minor actually. It's kind of this little arpeggio idea that you'll hear in, in the rhythm guitar part where you could play the G string, B string, and then the high E string, and then back to the B string around the B minor chord. So it's kind of that four, three, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, three, two, three. And then if you kind of lift off the bar, you can kind of kind of get that same idea with the open E. So it's almost like you're doing the B minor arpeggio three times, and then you're kind of opening it up for the open E to kind of get that B, D, E, B kind of going from the flat three to the four there. That's, that's a really cool riff. It's kind of the background to that other riff that we were talking about. Or, if you wanted to back up that other riff actually with, with kind of bigger ideas, yeah, you could use an E minor chord for, for the E note, where you could do first finger on the A second, second finger on the D second. If you strum all those together, that sounds like E minor, like, that sounds really sad. Um, or on E minors in general, you can add in three on the B string third, pinky on the high E third, kind of work that for your E minor. And then from the E minor, you might want to kind of back up that F sharp note, a couple different options here. Um, you could do an F sharp major, where you do second fret bar, second finger on the G third, third finger on the A fourth, pinky on the D fourth. So it's a lot like B minor, but you're on the wrong strings with two, three, and four. Or you could lift off the pinky and make that an F sharp seven. Or you could add in the pinky in a different place. Kind of work an F sharp seven. And then for the A note, you want to use an A major chord, where you do first finger on the D second, second finger on the G second, third finger on the B second. You strum all those together, that sounds like an A major chord. So you want to kind of use the bigger chords actually to kind of back it up, kind of B minor, B minor, F sharp major, A, and then B minor, A, B minor, B minor, F sharp, A, B minor, A. So you kind of dig on that, it's kind of a bigger sound. At tempo, that would be really difficult. Actually, through that part, 
if you wanted a really easy way out strumming wise you could just take the B minor and just kind of stay on the B minor and not even worry about the licks and you may want to gravitate to kind of an 8 down idea one two three four five six seven eight with the right hand da, 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 and kind of just back it up around the B minor or another way to do it would be kind of thinking of it as that the B minor kind of for a 4 or 8 and then B minor for another 4 last A change if you want to kind of back it up to the A. So kind of a B minor, B minor, A, B minor, like a kind of cool option too. So kind of ignoring the other riff, but if you want to play around with it and wait, there are lots of ways to get that lick in. Um, or you could gravitate towards another strum pattern. And one of my favorite strum patterns for a 4-4 like this is down, down, up, up, down, up. So you took the B minor and just tried that like you had down, down, up. change if you kind of dig on this you can do the B minor with the whole pattern and you kind of half the B minor with the A and then do just a down down up down up up down B minor down down up A down down up B minor down up down B minor down down up A down down up down up or you could split the pattern kind of a B minor down up A up down up could be kind of cool on that part too B minor gravitating to is something called a 16th note strum pattern. Actually, we'll talk about two of these, um, just so you got some vocabulary with some 16ths. But what I mean by that is if you're tapping your foot to the beat, right now we're dividing that beat into two parts with our down, down, up, up, down, up. Kind of one, two, one, two, and that's called an eighth note. What a 16th note is, is where you divide that into four parts. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And one of my favorite 16th note strum patterns is a long down, 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 up, up, down, down, up, down, up. So we took B minor and just tried doing a down for four. Kind of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's what you'd be doing on the first beat. Then on the second beat, you'd be doing a down one, down on three, up on four. So we're going one, two, three, four, down, 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 down. down. Then on the third beat, you do an up on two, down on three. So we're going one, two, three, four, one, up. Beat, you go down up down right along with the one two three four. So down 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 down. So all together, you got down 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 pattern you may want to play around with through the tune. Actually, I was really gravitating towards this, where it's a down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, 16th note pattern. And what I mean by that is on the first beat, you do a down on one, up on four. So we're going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, down, up, down, down. And on the second beat, you do an up on two, down on three. So kind of one, two, three, four, one, up, Third beat, you do it up on two, up on four. So we're going one, two, three, four, one, up, up, one, up, up, one, up, up. And then on the last beat, you're going down, up, down, up, right along with the one, two, three, four again. So down, up, 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 down. So all together, you got down. You may want to go down, up, up, down, and then go to the A for the up, down, down, up, down, up, B minor, A, kind of body. So you have B minor, 
experiment with that and kind of find a way that, that kind of works for you through that intro part. And then from there, then we go into our main verse. Our main verse actually keeps that idea going, but at the very end, well, we kind of go to a G major chord. And we play G major. First finger goes to A on the second fret, second finger on the low E third fret, third finger on the high E third fret. If you strum all those together, that sounds a G major chord and it sounds really happy. Now you may also want to think about putting the third finger on the B third, pinky on the high E third. Kind of working that for your G major, it sounds really, really happy. And then we kind of go to our whole pattern on the A, and we go back to kind of our intro idea, kind of, kind of twice through, and then we go back to our G major, and then we go to our F sharp major. Now you can really use any of those strummings through that whole part, kind of that verse with the B minor, B minor. From there we go into our first chorus. Our first chorus starts on the G major, but then we go to a D major chord. And we play D major. First finger goes to G on the second fret, second finger on the high E second fret, and third finger on the B string third fret. And if you strum the D string to the high E string, it sounds a D major chord and it sounds really happy. Now around Ds in general it can be kind of cool to lift off the second finger and make a D sus2, or you could add in the pinky on the high E third and make a D suspended chord say some things around Ds. And then from the D we go to an A major. And then we kind of have our B minor A again. Almost kind of one, two, three, four, A. And we got our whole pattern on the G. And then we add a D. An A. And then our F sharp major. Or if you're digging on the 16th pattern, you could kind of even mix up between those kind of. So you may want to kind of play around with that. And then from there we go back into kind of an, an, our intro idea. It kind of comes back through. Now one other thing you may want to think about adding this song though is bass notes. And a lot of times on that first down of the down, down, up, up, down, up, you can throw the bass for the chord. So on the B minor you'd have the A for the bass. On the A you'd have the A for the bass. On the G you'd have low E for the bass. The E minor you'd have low E for the bass. On the F sharp major or the F sharp 7 you'd have the low E for the bass. On the D chord for our chorus, we have the D for the bass. So we can even work that into kind of our intro, actually, kind of working that B minor with the bass. Down, down, B minor with the bass. Down, A with an A bass. B minor. B minor bass. Down, A bass. Down. Or if you're digging on the 16th pattern, you could work it as a bass. Down, down, up, up, up down. things up we kind of do our F sharp twice at the very end of our, our second uh, verse. So we can mix that up with our, our basses too. So we have our B minor, B minor, 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 
basis to that too. Yeah, kind of G. on our intro, kind of have that same B minor, it kind of started off, but then we kind of hang out around the B minor, and I was kind of thinking I'll do some left hand music just to kind of mix this up a little bit, so it's a little weird. I'm kind of taking the uh, index finger of my left hand and kind of just killing the strings when I'm not kind of working the, the pattern around it, so kind of a down, up, up, down. Lift that finger and just kind of kill some of the strings. Might be kind of cool. And we do that three times for our regular B minor. And then we kind of have a big hit on B minor before we go into our guitar solo. And on our guitar solo, it's kind of like a little variation of our chorus. Actually, we got kind of a G. Also, there's some killer guitar licks, and I, I pick out all these leads uh, by ear because a lot of times tabs aren't available yet. Um, so, but but I really think this is pretty close. Actually, you kind of start off on the ninth fret on the D, and then go twelfth on the D, and then back to nine on the D, and then eleventh fret on the G is kind of a bend. So I'm kind of playing that note, taking the first finger, second finger, and the third finger actually lined up nine, ten, eleven to kind of bend that note, and then we play it again. So you got 9, 12, 9, 11, bend, 11, 9, 10, 12, 9, 11, bend, 11. It's kind of that intro lick. And then from there, actually, there's this really cool lick where you can kind of start out on 11th fret on the G and do a pull off back to 9. After we play it three times, let's see. 11, pull off to 9, and we play some 9 some more. And then we slide that to 7. And then we slide that to 6. Fourth fret and second fret. You may want to set this up beforehand. Kind of first finger on the G second, third finger on the G four to do a pull off from four to two. So I'm kind of playing the fourth fret on the G, letting my finger fall to the ground to kind of get the sound of carry, and then going to the D string on the four, second on the D, and then back to four on the D. And you may want to word that as a pull off too. Actually, kind of pull off and then pull. You have kind of that 11 to 9 to 7 to 6. Yeah, you may want to stop that 6 earlier. I don't think it's quite as many. 11, And then there's this cool little lick, actually, that I was really digging on, on this particular lick. Kind of like a little box pattern on it. Where you have 10 on the B, 12 on the B, 12 on the high E, 12 on the B, 10 on the high E, 10 on the B, and then 12 on the B, 10 on the high E, and then back to 12 on the B. It's kind of weird. You may want to use some finger roll ideas. Like when you start that off, you can do 10, 12, and kind of roll the third finger to the 12 on the high E for the two 12s, and then the 10 on the high E. And the 10 on the B could be kind of a first finger bar, mini bar idea. Everybody loves mini bars. Um, and then you got 12 on the B, and then 10, and then back to 12. So it's a little weird. You may want to play around with that kind of 10, 12, 12, 12, 10, 10, 12, 10, 12, 10, 12, 12, 10, 12, 12, 10, 12, 10, 12, 12. It's kind of a crazy cool day. And 
kind of take that idea and then we do the same idea but now from fifth and seventh on the B and the E string. Right? But then we end it by going seven on the G string. So it's almost the same lick though, kind of five, seven, 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 five, five, seven. In with kind of almost like a little A ar arpeggio idea where we do 12 on the A string and then 9 to 11 as a hammer on on the D and then 9 on the G, 10 on the B. And all those are kind of notes around a C shape of an A for an A major hold, which is kind of cool. 12, 9, 11, 9, 10, and then we go back to 9 on the G, 12 on the B, 9 on the G, and then we bend 12 on the B string. It's an awesome little leg there too. And then we kind of end with, with tenth on the high E, twelve on the high E, twelfth fret bend, and then back to twelve on the high E, ten on the high E, and then twelve on the B as a bend, and then back to twelve just straight up. So ten, twelve, twelve, bend, twelve, ten, twelve, bend, twelve. So through that whole solo part, you got 9, 12, 9, 11, bend, 11, 9, 12, 9, 11, bend, 11, 11, 9, 7, 6, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 10, 12, 12, 12, 10, 10, 12, 10, 12, 5, 7, 7, 7, 5, 5, 7, 5, 7, 12, 9, 10, 11, 9, 10, 9, 12, Band, 12, 10, 12, band, 